afternoon, everyone. I think uh, when I get through my own talk, this, uh, I think it's partially been given here uh, by the introduction. And it's interesting that the uh, sculpture that we have seen here is a vision looking forward. And I think without preempting what I'm about to say to you, the final slide that I have is a similar basis, but it's not a sculpture. Uh, so I'm going to take you on a slightly different journey, but it's a journey that was made by the Inchinian Historical Interest Group, known as IHIC. I don't know how we like that mechanism, so if you hear me use IHIC, it's a group we're talking about. And who are a group of people who have progressed from being interested amateurs in the local community to being a bit more knowledgeable amateurs who eventually made this CD. And you'll be glad to know I'm not showing the CD because it runs for 45 minutes. But if you have a spare 45 minutes at the end, it's over there on the laptop that we've got. <clears throat> Today's conference is headed Community Heritage. Well, oral history is heritage in the community. Hence, we've got the equal sign there. The spoken word was one of the earliest ways of communication. And it is only in recent times that we've really got electronic technology has been developed to permit the interested amateur to become involved in a more direct way in recording oral history. And that's what I have done. The wrong thing. Pushing the wrong button here. This slide here was really having sat and looked at the dictionary, all the words of oral and history and community. Uh, is really just pulling out what we've actually been saying to you there just now. This slide here is one of the, it's the logo for the Insurance Insurance Group. This side is the um, industrial side of Insurance, and the far side is the rural side of it. And the big rose window you see in the middle is the Insurance Church window, and you'll see at the bottom. 597, so there's been a church in Sinan for over 1400 years, and that's where our story, as I'm telling you today, will finish up. So, the Insinan group, uh, sorry, where is Insinan? Just so you, those who might come from Edinburgh or somewhere like that know the side of <laughs> Glasgow. The centre of Glasgow, Insinan is 10 miles broadly from the centre of Glasgow, and if you are eagle eyed, you'll have spotted here the runway of Glasgow Airport. Uh, and the Chinon Church that used to be located right there at the end of it. The, the church no longer exists because it was demolished when the airport was uh, brought about. So, when we got together as a group, we had the usual thing. We got people down on a Thursday night when we meet uh, and they talked to us about whatever we'd asked them to come along and talk to us about. And we then asked ourselves after quite a number of meetings, is this what we want for our group to be entertained in inverted commas on a Thursday night, or do we want physically to do something? So we really decided we did want to do something, and we thought we would do an oral history project. And so in fairly short order, we got ourselves organized by making up a constitution and getting ourselves into a registered charity. And what we decided, how we were going to go about uh, achieving what we wanted to achieve. And we said, well, we'll have to decide what it is. And after a bit of discussion, we set up this thing here, which is in Shinnan Farmlands to the Erskine community. The Shinnan Farmlands has disappeared, and those that know the general area where the Erskine community is was farmlands until Erskine came about. And just to give you the flavour of it, we had the nice rural roads, we had the nice cattle, we had small holdings like this, and you've probably seen similar small holdings uh, in other parts of the country similar. Here was somebody had just moved into their new home and had a brand new car at the time, so there we are. Harvests as it used to be. Milk was a great thing that been produced. The dirty Howkin as well went on. And we even had some chips in these days actually sailed down the Clyde while the farming was going on. And we had uh, a milk marketing board artificial insemination plant in Inchirin. And 
this was one of the suppliers. So here we are. <laughs> this is what we've got now. And uh, again, if you go into anything, it's a new housing community that's been built since probably the sort of mid 70s onwards. Uh, I'm quite sure you will recognise constructions similar to what I'm showing you just now. This is why the Eskin was built where it was, the Eskin Bridge. This here is one of the original small holding buildings that's now used as a community. This one here was a farm, but it's still used as a farm, uh, and it's a community farm. This is some of the estate facilities, gateways that was still left in amongst the community. And here we are, we've got some nice young uh, Clydesdale Falls. Clydesdales were uh, a great, a great uh, area in Inchinnan for producing Clydesdales at the back end of 1800s and someone company is continuing that. Just to home us in a bit more, we have where you see Erskine and the part that we are talking about uh, is really this area here, where you see the word Erskine and where you see the dot beside the chin. All of that area is really all being taken up now with the, uh, that's all the farmland that there was. So, what we've got now is, how did we go about this project? Well, we decided, yes, it was oral. And we, because we knew nothing about how to go about making an oral history project, we went and spoke to Strathclyde University, where the Scottish Oral History Centre is based. And subsequently we went and knocked on the lottery's door, and both one and two gave us assistance because we got the training from the university and the lottery very kindly gave us the money to allow us to buy the equipment, the recording equipment, and also to cameras and all the rest of it. And the other part of the money funded our training from the university. And these are the things of, that, that happened. And the last line in utilization, Windows Movie Maker, uh, features large in a little while. This is as at our initial training day. Uh, just a number of us sitting here listening to one of the university lecturers. Part of the training is getting into the interviewing technique, and this is as doing some training in, in, in interviewing. And it's a, an interesting process if you haven't really uh, been involved in that before, but that was us doing it. We had to learn how to do use audacity. Uh, software, which is what is used for recording, and this is us actually in the university uh, having our training on the use of Audacity. Uh, this is what the front page of the Audacity training looks like, and you'll recognise these waves signs along the bottom. It's what you see in your telly every time somebody decides to give a bit of uh, voice recording on something, and it's how you manipulate this. We, we, the equipment we had uh, allowed us to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, allowed us to m record in WAV format, which is the best for voice recording and, uh, and storage, and then subsequently conversion to MP3 for manipulation. So it's really uh, an interesting technique how to learn how to do the two, these two things. This thing is up here really just to say, this is where we had the major stumbling block in our project because you're just looking at this and saying, what is that supposed to show me? Well, it's supposed to show you how the whole project's going, but that's what we were looking at on the screen and it's one of the pitfalls that you come across if you've ever had the joy of merging MP3 and pictures. This is what you get. This is what we should have got. So we got there eventually because, as you can see, we've got a good picture of it. Uh, and here is the title again. And what we're merging here, every one of them is a slide. And the wee green bar you see at the top is the sound clip that we have got from the recordings that we have taken when we were making this thing. And here it is. This, is, this was our ultimate objective. And here are the stars. It's not the ancient historical group that are stars. This is the stars. Every one of these individuals here has given us their views and what it was like 
to come to Inchinnan or be born in Inchinnan in this location. What their life was like as it progressed from the mid 30s through into the early 70s. This fellow here came to Inchinnan when he was one. His father got put off his land in Ayrshire and his father took this place. This fellow here, his family came to Inchinnan in 1838 and he's very proud of it. But he got put off the land in 1970. This man down here, his family came in 1792 to Inchinnan and they went off the land as well. Um, this man here, is a man that's continuing to breed white snails. And uh, you'll see, we're very kindly put the ladies on the middle, we'll put the men in the top and in the bottom here. This man here, when he moved from his farm in one location, he now lives on White Moss Farm in Bishopton. And for the archaeologists amongst you, those that know where the White Moss Farm is, it, uh, his farm building sits right on top of the Roman fort. In the days of old, when nobody bothered a bit about archaeology, he went to build a farm there, build a farm. So his farm sits plumb in the centre of a Roman port. This man here was involved in the nice task of putting in the sewers all round about this here. So they've all got different stories to tell you, and it's really the magic of sitting down, talking to someone, and listening to what they say in response to what you ask them. Now, where you have some questions, once they start talking to you, they may well start saying a lot more than answering your initial question. And a very classic example is going back to this fellow here. He started telling us about things uh, and his great uncle. So he's talking about back in the late 1880s. Again, you'll realise from social history in the Victorian times, you tend to have very large families. And if you're not the oldest brother on a farm, then you're not inheriting the rental of the farm. If you're a, a second, third, fourth brother, you've got to find somewhere to go or do. And two of his uncles decided they would go to South Africa. And they went to South Africa in the back in the 1880s. Uh, and again, if you know your history a wee bit, you'll know that in the 1890s, we started to run up against the Boer War. And the, these fellas got caught up in the Boer War, finished up in Mafia King, along with uh, Baden Powell, who's a famous man from the Mafia King. And he produces a letter for me from his brothers from Murphy King, written back to his great uncle to say, we're doing fine and here's what it's like inside Murphy King on, during the siege. And I'm talking to him about how does his family do when they get tuffed off their land in Ersia, and he's telling me about Murphy King. So they, they, they just, you have just no idea where the conversation will go, and that's the real magic about it all. We have something like 19 hours of recordings from all of these people on here, and we have, uh, we have used something like 30 minutes of it. And we have a lot of other things to do. Yeah, the wrong place got point here. What did we learn? Well, before, uh, this here is just us doing some overlay map, or overlays on maps using conventional Windows technology, not the super duper stuff that somebody can carry about over here. But we learned how to do that. We also learned a good bit about the, the legal side of things. What, why did these, how did the farm, the small holdings of farms happen on this bit of ground? So we found out all these acts of parliament that around there. We found out all about how farming quotas are all going. We found out about tax, and tax are the documents between the farmer who's renting the farm and the landowner. And the interesting thing about these two being sitting together is you'll see the dates. 6 to 42 years together. This is from Archibald Campbell. That's Archibald Campbell. This is James Snodgrass. This is James Miller. This fella here is this fella's father. This fella here is this fella's father. So it's a father and son in each, in, in each way. This man over here eventually became Lord Blyswood. This man here was an aide de camp to Queen Victoria. So we find out all these things. This is a list of people who were originally on. There was a total of 37 uh, small holdings. This up here was all the kind of things that were done in the small holdings. These are all the names of the individuals. And just to save you straining your eyes, here's a resume of what they were all doing. Uh, so you just get it. So it's rural, rural activity. We also found out about family histories. 
uh, and this just happens to be one. So you divide it into, you're doing an oral history project, and you're away on to family histories as well. But then somebody then starts asking about this stuff here, and this thing here is what it tells you in the bottom. These are the things that you had before you had uh, dredgers and dumper trucks and all that kind of stuff. The river got dredged, they dumped the stuff in the top, and then they found homes for all this up with soil. And that's they're just lying there rotten. But they were not quite sitting there. So, what did we not put into the project that's over there on the disc? All of these things that's listed up there, but many of these things are actually covered in the actual interview. So there is a whole list of things there that we can do in more projects. One of this is not included either. There are one of these for every region in Scotland, I think, in Britain. But this was produced in 1947. It was reprinted in 1997, 50 years after, and it really is the whole development of the Clyde Valley. Many of the things that came to pass, like the Clyde Tunnel, the Erskine Bridge, and an assortment of other things were all in this, and this was done in 1947, and the Erskine Bridge was opened in 1990, sorry, 1970. This isn't in it, but while the Erskine was being built, Here's a big truck fleeing round about. Now, those of you are not aware of it, but that there is a stone fuel vehicle, which is an off the rain truck, which is designed to go literally anywhere. And as you can see there, it's going anywhere. There's nothing about it there. Here are just a list of names of the people again, who they just acknowledge them, so they all are. Here they're all here, and suited and booted, as they say, at the first open day we had, and they're all holding their copy of this, because they're all in it. Here's all the people that we were very happy to acknowledge and get assistance from. People down at the bottom are the ones who were of our group that were involved. The university are very happy with what we're doing because they're using them in their publicity. And we are now saying, what do we do from here? We want to carry on interviewing people and getting all this kind of information. And well, that's what we're after from people. And we keep telling them all that and it's amazing. We've got things, well, I've just shown you the tax and so on, but we've got invitations to come and meet Queen Victoria in Blyswick House in 1888. We've got a thing like that. So, here are the things that we're thinking about. This is the oral history projects that we are considering moving on to. And that's a list of five. And there's another list of four. And we're saying, well, not only do we want to do oral history, we want to think about other things. And the one that is of really interest now is this one here. That has morphed itself into uh, uh, think I'm right now. this project. This is a stained glass window in the church to St. Conville, uh, who's the patron of the church in this area. And as I say, 597 he appeared in the scene. Uh, so these are stones that are at the current church. Historic Scotland are interested in them. I know John's from Historic Scotland here. They're under his care. Uh, they're over a thousand year old, that's why he's interested in them. But we have this group of stones which we refer to as the Templar stones, but they are not all Templar stones. Uh, with them, this is the location of where the church was. This is what the Roy's map showed us for the same place. And the buildings that you see on here are not all the same buildings you saw in the previous one. That's what the last church was like in 1966, before it got demolished. That's what it was like when it got demolished, and you can see the planes coming in. And that's where the runway is from where the site is that uh, we're going to carry out our archaeological dig. And you'll say, well, what's that got to do with this? Well, we're standing here looking into the distance, it's exactly the same as these gentlemen in the sculpture were looking at the distance, and really what we are doing is saying this is our way forward for the Ancient Historical Interest Group, expanding into an archaeological project as opposed to oral history. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.